Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk is hitting theaters soon. He's a great director. Let's just say that up top. This is Screen Junkies News. Brought to you by the new Samsung Chromebook Plus, the first Chromebook made for Google Play. Hi, I'm Dan Merle. And I'm Roth Cornett. You open with a fact, not a pun. Uh, I, I felt like we needed to establish this very, just right up at the tippy top because uh, there's so much to get into with Dunkirk. Um, Christopher Nolan's latest movie, telling the true life story of the evacuation of English soldiers, uh, British soldiers from the beaches of Dunkirk in World War II. So let's just start up at the top. Um, Let's start with what we loved about this movie because there's a lot to love in this movie. Yeah. There's, there, this is a kind of a brilliant technical masterwork from Christopher Nolan. So let's start there. Yeah, it is. You know, and and this is sort of what he's known for, right? Like when we talk about filmmaking, he is a beautiful filmmaker in terms of how he uses the camera and the tools of film cinema. Particularly here, this is shot seventy percent, five percent of this movie is shot in IMAX, and man, it is gorgeous. Yeah. When it's not in IMAX, it's used very smartly. When the aspect ratio changes, and just for you guys. Is that means basically when it goes from being um, horizontal to vertical and back, it he utilizes it that way when he wants you to feel claustrophobic. So when you're in a space in the film that you should feel claustrophobic, that's when he changes the aspect ratio. And then yeah. he winds it out and he brings it back into the IMAX when you're in an expansive space. I mean, it is stunning filmmaking. Yeah. And if you love film and if you, you're sort of like a filmmaker in the making, any of that, it, this is something that you should see for that reason. It's quite a feat. Yeah, Christopher Nolan is a massive master technician mm -hmm. and I think that this is a brilliant piece of technical filmmaking as far as use of score um, you know pra practical and CGI I couldn't spot an effect shot in this movie I'm sure it probably wasn't all practical yeah. but if there was CGI I didn't notice it uh, just the way that he shoots the film the way that he, that he makes this film feel and and the way that he creates like you're saying that atmosphere yeah. of either claustrophobia or desolation yeah. you get both of that in this movie uh, yeah as as a as a just a technical look at a war movie I mean the battle scenes in this movie are spectacularly well choreographed amazingly well shot this is a beautiful movie it looks fantastic um, and, and yeah the, the the way that he uses sound, the way that he uses, yes. it's so immersive and really puts you in that moment. And it's funny because that's a word that I think particularly over the last eh, 10 years or so has been thrown around a lot. It's been used when we talk about 3D and it's an immersion experience, but this really is. If you go see it, you really should see it in IMAX and see it as yeah. he was intending it because you will, at, you, for a minute, second one, you are located in this war. You are feeling the danger. You are feeling the imminent potential of your own dem demise because you're put in the position of this one character yeah. and it's as if you're traveling through the war this moment in war with him yeah. it's an interesting way to do a war film too because it's just this one moment in time it's this one event in the middle of this larger war it doesn't get into any of the details about why they're at war what's happening and we, we know all of that it's just locating you in this moment of absolute crisis right. and failure yeah. and how in the midst of this failure people are rising to the occasion to um, to sort of rescue their own, right? right? So in that sense, you are 100% in it. It's not pleasant, right? Because it's terrifying. Yeah. But it's beautiful and so well done in that way. And you know with Nolan that you are going to get something that is so intricately planned mm -hmm. and executed and thought out. And I love that about him. I think that he is, you know, as far as just, just being able to conceive of an idea and execute that just on a filmmaking level cinematically. Uh, this and Interstellar both, I think. Just the big ideas that you had with both of those movies mm -hmm. and the execution of that to screen. You know, I think that he kind of has is one of the, the best idea guys working today in that he can can think of something and and make it happen and it's and it's amazing and yeah. it's great to watch and and he can construct these worlds that that so many people would have trouble relating to. Yeah. Um, and he and, did that with this movie. And, and it is like, you know, as far as a war movie, it, it is very immersive and it does do a great job of saying like, this is what it's like to be in the moment. And it, it, it utilizes the tools as we were talking about. You're talking about the sound design. There's a there's a very propulsive sound design to mm -hmm. this and it continues on throughout the film. It's about an hour and 30 minutes roughly. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little over an hour and a half. Little, yeah. little bit. Um, and he uses the sound design the entire time to keep you in this middle of this tension. Yeah and the space of this tension throughout the film as if you're in this moment. And then again, when it cuts off, it's specifically that moment of deep release, right? Yeah. So that's done very, very well 
also. Sure. Um, some great acting in this film, too. You've got people, this is an amazing cast. You've got Killian Murphy, Killian Kenneth Murphy. Branagh is in this yeah. movie. Uh, you've got Oscar winner um, Mark Rylance, yeah. just oh. recently for Bridge of Spies. You have Tom Hardy How, is playing another mask, Christopher Nolan character. How much do we love Mark Rylance, you guys? That's all. Go ahead. <laughs> he brings a, he brings a, a sincerity, <laughs> yeah. which I, I think he brings a, a lot of gravity to, to every role that he plays. And he's simple. He makes really simple, clean choices as an actor. I never feel like he's overplaying anything. So I believe him. I believe him. He's he's got a heroic mission, but he also feels very much like an everyman in this, which is, I think, what this was all about. This was citizens coming to get their soldiers. And since we're on the internet, I think we're obligated to mention also that Harry Styles, yes, <laughs> famous former One Directioner. I don't know, yeah. right? Are they still together? Who cares? I'm not uh, sure. Sorry, I'm sure a lot of people care. Yeah. I just don't. Um, is also is and he's actually not bad. I not mean, he's, bad. He's, he's he's he doesn't stand out. He is he is kind of like the best looking soldier, he but not such... in an extraordinarily distracting way. But still, it's just like wow, that. Hmm. You sort of go well. I guess there had to have I guess been there had to have some, been some really like really good looking soldiers, soldiers out there. But and like he's the one. He would definitely have to, like he had a hard time going through basic training because he would oh, get yeah. made fun of a lot. Uh, the pretty boy yeah. fighting in them. But no, he's actually not bad. Yeah. Um, for what he has to do in this movie. Um, so I think Roth. A lot of people would just prefer us to wrap this up right here and call it a day. Yes. However, there were some things with this movie that I think we both shared. Some things that maybe they weren't. Great. Yes. So, Stop the presses. <laughs> um, so there are a we... lot of people calling this movie a masterpiece, yes. Roth, and we should just shut our mouths about what we don't like. We However, should. there are a few things we both share these opinions. And by the way, I said it at the top. I'm going to say it again. We both love Christopher yes. Nolan. <laughs> He's we, a great filmmaker. We just were very complimentary of him for like five minutes. Well, but there were some things in this movie that maybe we didn't think were done so well. To, to be clear, again, like I, I really do think he's a brilliant filmmaker yeah. and as a piece of uh cinema this is a masterwork it is a masterwork of things like cinematography and the tools of cinema yeah. Ho Hoidema, who's a cinematographer gorgeous beautiful work here this is something that we should see and we should um admire yeah. now let's talk about the things that felt like they didn't entirely work one for me was that i had hoped that the structure would be clear and clean in this one because it's a it's a real event yeah and i thought that especially with the way he was telling the story that if he had simply told the story right that it would have been so powerful but instead he used a structure that i that i think i understand why he did it he it was a non-linear structure right yeah. where he's putting you in a character's perspective it's from air um, land and, and sea, sea. Right. and he's putting you in a character's perspective and then he goes back in time and puts you in a different character's perspective and he goes back in time and puts right. you in a different character's perspective. There's something great about that in terms of storytelling, but it got in... Uh, it got in the way. It I got think in the it way. got in the way of the storytelling particularly and, I, and it was curious to me when I kind of figured out, and, and it's not a big spoiler because you kind of figured out pretty early in the movie yeah. what exactly is going on, but just watching the movie, I felt like it undercut the tension toward the end of the film because the way that it works is you jump it forward, you're jumping back, but it, it's kind Kind of all culminating to the end. So it resolves and then it goes back it to unresolved. It resolves unresolve. and goes back. Exactly. So you see what happens to characters before you see the, the peril that they're in. And I, it, it, to me, that undercut a lot of the tension of what's going to happen to this character because yeah. you've shown me what happens to this character. So now, and, and I almost feel like as a moviegoer and as somebody who, you know, I knew vaguely of the story, but somebody that didn't know the, the intricacies of the story. And, and just from a storytelling standpoint, I felt like if you could have kept these three stories and kind of progressively built them up and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you bring in Tom Hardy at the point in the story where his character enters the story. You're not seeing him earlier than, than, you know, he, he came in and you're seeing these different stories as they happen because I think they have a rhythm and they, and they are compelling enough and, and, and it is shot and, and tense and filled and, and so propulsive. If you had allowed this narrative to exist naturally mm -hmm. and built to this tension point because there's this kind of one tension point at the end that it's sort of building to and it's a great one except yeah. at the height of the tension you've already then seen you've what, already happens. Seen what happens so yeah. you're, you you i was less invested in the movie and i feel like you had the makings of for me what would have been a a great yeah. movie 
that was undercut by this narrative choice to kind of underpin things and introduce people and loop back. And I don't know, I don't know if you felt like that was expected of him to kind of play with the storytelling this way, but it seemed like an unnecessary choice to me. And it, and it did undercut my enjoyment of the film because this movie is about tension. Yeah. And I feel like you lose some of that with that storytelling choice. I, I agree. And I, I, I didn't think he would go, go that route for this one. I was actually really excited to see him just to tell sort of a linear story. I mean, look, mm. Memento, when it came out, was my favorite movie of that year. I yeah. love it to this day. I love that he can play with time that way in film. It's part of what you can do with the medium. But for this particular story, you're right. Because even if you know the history, which, I mean, most people going to see this will have a vague familiarity. Right. You certainly don't know exactly what's going to happen to these characters. Right. Until he tells you and then goes back. And here's the other thing is that there's one particular character that he opens up a, th a story thread with mm -hmm. and then never resolves it. Does, it. The, the loop in the middle the loop doesn't quite just, connect. Yeah. It doesn't connect at all. And so you're left wondering at the end of the movie, but wait a minute, what happened to get that person from A to B? Because you see him at one point and you see him at another point and it's kind of a big jump. And yeah. you're like, what okay, was what the happened? connecting thread? And you, you, it doesn't resolve that. But I think even bigger than that, the second thing that took me out even a little bit more is I think if there's been criticism for, from about Christopher Nolan's style, it's that he is a, a very a brilliant technical filmmaker, but can be a little cold and yeah. can be a little on the nose with theme. And, you know, I think the, 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 the love theme in Interstellar took a lot of people as a little on the nose. Mm -hmm. And there are some themes in his other movies. And I think this movie... He he kind of I think a big part of the war movies and, and 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 following characters is that you know who these characters are and you you know their hopes and their dreams, you know something about them. Yeah. And you don't get that in this movie. There's really no characterization of any of them. I maybe two or three of them even have names, uh, at least that are spoken aloud in the sure, movie. Yeah. Uh Kenneth Branagh's character in particular it is just kind of there and even the soldiers that you're following, you, you it's kind of in media res and you never get any information about them and i i understand that if you're if you're going with a fly on the wall approach and like this is the reality of war and it's not about character i get that but then the movie asks you to care about them right as the movie goes on and you know nothing about them other than the fact that obviously you're scared for them just because of the fact that they're human beings sure but there's really no characterization given to anybody in this movie which again for me undercut the tension because I see that these characters are in danger, but as a moviegoer, I don't feel that connection to them right. that would heighten that experience. I feel like the the that partially the structure does account for that because it puts you in this loop that just as you, it's an interesting thing because the filmmaking is so intimate, yeah. right? It intimately locates you in this event. It, you're so right in it, and yet it's distant. You feel distant from the human beings distant, in the event. That's exactly how I felt. So from, yeah. It's like you're, you're watching. It, it's like you're watching. At first it feels like you're there. And then as it goes along, you feel more and more distant because yeah. you're not intimate with the characters. You're not intimate with the characters because just as you feel like you start to know them, it flips back to an mm -hmm. earlier point in time or to a different point in time. Or to a different character um, completely. To a different character completely. Yeah. And you're right. Like if you think about sort of the great war movies, it is about um, dynamic characters and being involved with them, you know? Yeah. Um, Apocalypse Now, yeah. you're very intimately connected with these people, even when you don't want to be because it makes you uncomfortable because they're kind of monsters. Yeah. Like here, unfortunately, we're never able to feel that with them yeah. because it feels a little bit fragmented. Again, it's a beautiful movie. It's a gorgeous <laughs> movie. But I think there's also the thing of, and, and, and I, Christopher Nolan is a great craftsman of cinema, and, I, and I'm not going to deny that, and I don't think a lot of people will deny that, but I think for a lot of people, you and I included, cinema to us is more than craft. Uh, craft is an extremely impart, important part of movies, but as a moviegoer, I also need some emotional investment. I need a movie to give me some context, some connection, something that I can recognize either on a personal level or just on a human level, other than the fact that these are people in, in peril. And, and this movie didn't give that to me. I didn't have that, which is why I'm with you. I was in the moment for about the first half hour of this me movie. Me too. And then as we went and I realized that that this, as far as character-wise, this is what I was going to get. And, and I wasn't going to really get to know any more about these people. I did feel that disconnect. And it did feel a little, and I used this word to begin with talking about Nolan, it felt a little cold to me from an emotional storytelling level. And that's what, for me, keeps this movie from being great. I think it is a technical masterpiece, and and I'm I 
I recommend that people go and see Me it. Me too, but, 100%. But yeah. This is a, a really great technical movie that I think is a really good overall movie, but is held back from greatness, I think, by some of the storytelling and characterization choices. I agree. And I think probably for that first half hour, Dan was sitting next to me and I was driving you insane because <laughs> I kept jumping and freaking out because it was so rich yeah. in terms of the atmosphere that he was to create, able to create and that immersive experience. Um, and I really was physically frightened and um, upset. I was sitting there going, this is not unpleasant, but it's really, really, I mean, this is not pleasant, but this is mm -hmm. really remarkable. Yeah. And then slowly um, I had wanted to feel more intimate with these characters too. So I agree i would a thousand percent recommend that people go see this film no. because it is absolutely a technical feat of filmmaking and it is a masterwork in that way um it is a very 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 good movie and as compared to most of the movies that are out there it's pretty incredible it is but but it, it, what we expect from it and what we expect i think because we do respect nolan yeah. you know what we expected out of this movie is that does it quite achieve everything that it had the potential to achieve Maybe not. Maybe not. And and uh, yeah, there's so many people, even other critics, that are calling this movie a masterpiece. And there, uh, that's I can see from many points of view how this is a masterpiece. It's not a masterpiece for us. But guess what? It's, we're not slamming a movie by calling it not a masterpiece. There can be movies that are good. And if you see it, you think it's a masterpiece. That's great. We're not saying you're wrong. That's the other thing. We're both. I feel like there's there's a war going on already on between people on this movie. Between uh, <laughs> I liked it more than you did, uh, or you didn't like it as much as I did. I, we liked it. Yeah, it's good. We're Go see it. We liked it. We I, liked it. I feel like there's a war on subjectivity, right? Like there this is, is a bit of war on subjectivity. <laughs> yes. This is this is these are two people that happen to have very similar opinions about this film, but there's a million opinions out there, and you should go ahead and make up your own and yeah. chat with us. We're happy to chat about it. Um, but certainly, he's a great filmmaker. Yeah. As an appreciator of this process, I was impressed. I would love to see his craft if he hooks up with a great, a great writer. writer, like a, like 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 not that he's not. And let's get his let's brother see the Nolan Charlie Kaufman movie. exactly like the Nolan Charlie Kaufman movie, or like him just like connected with one of the the great Hollywood screenwriters yeah. working right now. I think there is some incredible potential. There. Or like he'd be fun with Sorkin, right? Sorkin, and he can yeah. like manage structure oh boy, really that's well. Too many cooks in the kitchen. A lot of people. About the, yeah, a lot I of people. But I, 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 yeah, nothing against. Dude. No one. He is a fantastic yeah. filmmaker. We only we only really want him to get better and just see more from him because he's shown us so much. So that aside, let's not lose this. Roth and I both like the movie, and we are definitely recommending that you go see it. I, and I go see it in IMAX. It should be seen the way that Nolan shot it. Go check it out. Dunkirk hits theaters on Friday. That's what we thought of the movie. Did you see it? And what did you think of it? I guarantee you, you will let us know in the comments oh, yeah. below. Did you agree with us? Did you disagree with us? Be nice to each other. Be civil. There's room for all kinds of opinions. And also, we all like the movie, so I we don't did. know why it's already starting. That we're, doesn't matter. We uh, Roth, we're getting ready to go down to San Diego. Diego. Going to San Diego we'll Comic Con. We'll be covering all the news at Comic Con this week, and of course uh, this summer and the rest of the year. Yeah, we'll be covering and reviewing all the big movies that come out, and the little ones too, because there's room for the big sick and big, the beguiled and and the little hours and all fun stuff. We have been talked about it. We should we should do a little movie roundup. Little movie roundup. Little movie Maybe roundup. that's coming soon. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dan Merle. I'm Roth Cornett. Stay tuned right here on Screen Junkies News. We'd like to thank our sponsor, the new Samsung Chromebook Plus, for sponsoring today's episode.